is up my dudes welcome to sketchbook session number eight so since you guys have been enjoying the sketchbook session so much lately i thought that i would do another one and the other reason for that is that i don't really have time to do anything else this week so in today's sketchbook session we're going to talk about how busy and overwhelmed i am and we're also going to be drawing some vampires oh, because it is yeah. still the spooky season as you guys can see well don't let it scare you and i want to continue on being spooky so last year when the whole like strawberry dress black dress thing was going around i drew these two lovely vampire ladies and they've become kind of ocs since then i just kind of draw them whenever i'm bored so since it has kind of become tradition to draw my spooky vampire ladies and since i haven't been able to draw a lot of spooky art this season i want to draw these ladies in my new sketchbook and i have a fun little idea for what i want to do the other day when my friend and i were getting ready to go to a halloween party she took this lovely candid photo of us and i thought it was just very cute and perfect for a couple of vampire ladies about to go out in the town which is exactly what we were actually so today i'm gonna draw this little photo in my sketchbook using my vampire girl so i think it's gonna be fun and relaxing and non-stressful because sometimes I try to do too much in these sketchbook sessions and it stresses me out. So let's get started. And every time I do this, I have to clean up all of my decorations before I can actually draw. My autofocus has been a little like unreliable lately. So if it gets randomly blurry, I'm really sorry. I don't know what to do about it. I don't trust manual focus for this because I'm still not very good at using it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I feel like figuring out the composition for this on one of these pages might be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to do my best. And if long time viewers would know that I'm normally partial to a ballpoint pen, but I have been a little bit rusty with the drawing lately. <laughs> I mentioned it a bit in my previous sketchbook session that like I haven't had a whole lot of time to practice and just work on fundamentals lately. And I've said it before, whenever I'm not kind of in practice, my anatomy and proportions will be a little wacky, just a little goofy. So uh, since I haven't had time to practice lately, the ballpoint pen drawing has been a little bit rough. It'll just not be very good. And I'll get really impulsive and go too fast, which I got faster at drawing with a ballpoint pen for a while because I was in practice. But then once I got out of practice, it stopped really being that way. So uh, we're gonna use a little red pencil to get us started today because I don't wanna mess this up and have it be all wonky and weird. Cause I mean, we know what happened last time. Last sketchbook session was quite a wild ride. So I'm gonna try to actually make this a little bit better. I say that every time every single time i'm like oh yeah this time is gonna be good we're gonna really do something this time and then <laughs> sometimes it's good sometimes eh, it, it, it happens you know sometimes you gotta show the process of the art that's not so good so whoa i don't know what this pose i just drew out was i'm trying to translate this little pose that my friend is doing into something that like fits this particular character's personality a little bit better Cause she's like, I don't know, she's got that whole sassy thing going on. But uh, anyways, how are you guys? How's it going? Are you guys having a good October? Are you having a good spooky month? I would say I am so far, but I'm also very overwhelmed and tired. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but those of you who are in school or in college will understand. Since it's the middle of the semester for a lot of us, the institutions just really like to pile all of the work during this time. And if you're a kid who enjoys being spooky and just like hanging out and having some downtime to enjoy the nice weather, it's a bit of an imposition to have everything going on at once. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm dealing with too. I'm sure a lot of you are also dealing with the same thing, given this is when like midterms are for a lot of people, and uh, like it's just busy in general. I feel like a lot of industries for work are also super busy right now too. So comment below if you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, because I certainly am. Pour one out for all us ladies who are just trying to do the darndest and get things done, you know? 
it's hard out here. But anyways, that's why I'm trying to do a little bit of a dress down video today. Man, my man shoulders are hard to adapt into like a, a more feminine form in this sketch here. Let us all take a moment to appreciate my incredibly wide shoulders. Magnificent. I need an eraser. We are already starting off on just a lovely foot. But as I was saying, my stress and busyness is why I'm doing something a little bit more dressed down today. Normally I wouldn't do sketchbook sessions so close by each other back to back just cause like, I like to have multiple ideas. I like to vary the content a little bit, but I really doubt any of you are going to complain since this is mostly what you guys like to see from me anyways, but I don't know, more for me. I feel like I like to do different stuff, but I'm super busy right now working on some bigger projects for the end of the month, so that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this. And I also just wanted to take some time to like actually draw, since I haven't had a, an opportunity to just sit down and draw for a while. Um, I've just been like having class every morning basically, so that takes up a lot of my like sketchbooking time because normally the mornings is when I work in my sketchbook. I'll just like, you know, get a cup of coffee or a tea and just work and have a good time. But <laughs> lately I've been leaving early so that I can go to class or uh, I've been having like online classes at home. So anyways, uh, since I haven't been doing as much art for videos, that is what has been happening and uh, yeah. I want to get back to doing more art for videos, like I, I am now, it's just like the videos are for the next couple of weeks. I'm trying to like plan ahead with the content a little bit more, uh, especially since there's sponsors involved and everything. Wow, this pose is really hard for me for some reason, probably because I'm out of practice. But yeah, so I have a couple more spooky videos planned for the month of October. Um, I'm sorry we didn't have one last week, it was just too much, uh, very overwhelming, and I don't want to push it and like put out mediocre content, that's like one of the last things I would like to do on this channel is just put out mediocre, the mediocre content that I'm not really proud of or I'm not really feeling like I want to actually do weekly content at some point, but now is not necessarily the time for that just because I'm so busy because I'm still like in college and stuff so for now I'm just trying to find ideas that excite me that I want to like make videos about and I've mentioned it in the past I'm kind of trying to pivot into some other kind of content that I want to make so there's gonna be one of those videos near the end of the month and then there's going to be a video that's a little bit more art focused like the kind of content that I've been making Maybe a little different, just because I'm still trying to experiment with new ideas and kind of get out of the bubble of art content, since I've said before, I feel like some of it can be a little bit samey a lot. And uh, again, I just don't want to make things that are like, you know, if it exists and someone's doing it better than I'm doing it, like, what's the point, you know? Especially if I'm like, not enjoying it, like... You guys should go and watch the content of the people who are doing it well. Does that sound too cynical? I don't know, but anyways. <laughs> I just, I want to make things that excite me, and if it doesn't excite me, then I just don't feel like making it, you know? Uh, so, if a couple of the most recent ideas I've had weren't necessarily your cup of tea, that's fine. Um, I'm going to try to make it sort of a mixed bag so that people can have a little bit more of the stuff that they subscribed for and some new content so that you guys can see some of the flavor that I want to bring to the channel. So I feel like I'm getting partially off topic, but uh, I did want to talk a little bit about art block and well not art block, but I guess like art block and being rusty because uh, I haven't had time to draw lately, and I feel like this is a conversation that a lot of you will also relate to, because it's just one of those very busy times of year. 
Man, I really am not figuring out this pose, am I? Uh, but yeah, right now it's like so insane. It's hard to just find some time to sit down and, and like draw some stuff. And uh, it's hard to like be inspired too because it's so busy. Like sometimes when you do have time to draw, you just want to sit and like rest for a minute instead. So that's one of the things that's been preventing me from putting out as much art as I want to. So, uh, and I also just like, like basically I have school and then this one giant huge project that I've been working on for a couple of months now. Um, I'm sure some of you could guess what that is. And then I have like trying to stick with the weekly videos and that's like what I've been up to lately and uh man I don't know what I think of these poses eee. I am for sure rusty so besides that stuff I just haven't had an opportunity to just sit down and draw cause like I'm trying to get all this stuff done so uh any free time that I've had I've basically been putting into one of those things so, well, I guess any time that I have, <laughs> whenever I'm doing, like, work work or school assignments, I wouldn't necessarily call that free time. It's just time. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess that, that is to say I'm very tired right now and burned out. Like, I'm burned out and I'm not. Like, I'm very still creatively, like here to stay and I have like lots of ideas that I want to execute but I guess the mental energy needed to execute some of those ideas just like it's not in the old noggin right now it's not I don't have it so uh especially since now this is like good and bad because it's always better to have interesting things in your schoolwork than non-interesting things. But we've been having some more like creatively based assignments lately that kind of require some of that brain power that is the same vein as like making stuff or drawing stuff. And like, I guess when you do that all the time, every day, it's like your job, it's your school, it's like every waking moment, <laughs> you just, your brain can only do so much of it well. Like, you can still produce a result, but it's not always great, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, so, that's some of what's been going on. It's hard to, like, just make yourself be creative, like, all the time, every hour of the day. It's like, oh, dude, I'm starting to get tired here. I'm starting to just, like, want to take a nap. And, uh, I don't really have time to, so... I've just, like, boxed myself into this place where I don't really have any days off. Um, and it's my own fault that I don't have any days off, so, like, I, there's no one to blame but myself, but... Um, uh, I also probably need to fix that and actually have some days off. And I don't know when I'm gonna do that, because... I guess the other challenge of this is that, like, what I like to do in my free time can also be considered work. And if I'm doing something that could be considered work and it could, like, help the channel or it could be, like, kill two birds with one stone and get content for a week or something like that, I'm like, well, why don't I just do some work instead of doing, like, free time stuff, you know? It makes sense until it completely spirals out of control and you're just tired, you know? So we need to work on that. And I don't want anyone to be concerned. Like, I'm fine, I'm sleeping sometimes. Um, it's just hard to balance things when you want to make so much stuff and when your entire life is making stuff and you, like that's all you do it's a little bit exhausting so uh but yeah that's a little bit of what i've been up to to get more specific like um i feel like th those of you who watch the sketchbook sessions are 
a special breed, they can be privy to like a little bit more information than those who just watch like the other regular videos since this is a little bit more loose and unscripted. So um, someone guessed what I'm making. I told you guys that I was uh, making like a Halloween costume, like my own Halloween costume, like original design and everything uh, in my last sketchbook session. And I was like, all right, you guys should guess what it is. And I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm going to tell you that someone did guess what it is. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. So that video, as long as I can, cause it's gonna be a video too. I'm not just making it for the heck of making it. Although that is something I would do, but this is what I mean by taking things that I would already do for myself, for enjoyment and making them into content. It's a problem, but um, <laughs> That video, if I can get it done, will hopefully be an extra video coming out around Halloween. So I'm also going to have just a regular uh, video coming out, regularly scheduled content, and then I'm going to have an extra thing. And I know that sounds kind of wild and like, why are you doing that? But the, re the main reason why I'm doing that is because I have a sponsor and I can't get the original video done <laughs> in time to get reviewed by the sponsor, but I also need a video for the sponsor. So it sounds convoluted, but like, it's it's kind of a plan. It's kind of not a plan, you know? Uh, it's something, but be on the lookout for that if that's something you're interested in, because there will be a character design element to it. I feel like it'll be pretty fun and different, and I'm gonna try to make it as interesting as possible, so. If that's something that you guys are interested in, like more of a costuming video that has like stuff about character design in it too, then you guys should keep a lookout. And also, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Just go ahead and subscribe because we have fun here and I draw a lot of cute girls and I occasionally am a cute girl, so um, I don't see a reason for you not to subscribe. Composition, who is she? <laughs> Also, the proportions of this are a little weird, like more are the proportions of the characters in relation to each other, because, um, I don't know if I even mentioned this, I completely got off into a tangent a couple minutes ago, but, um, this girl is of course based on the strawberry dress, and this girl is based on the black dress, and, um, in relation to one another, the girl in the strawberry dress is a lot shorter than the girl in the black dress, and I didn't really, like find these, uh, what? I didn't really draw these proportionate to each other in terms of height, so that's really fun and good for me. Very good job, excellent work. Um, so, it might look a little weird, but for the purposes of this drawing, you guys can just pretend that Strawberry Dress Girl is standing on a step stool, because she wants to be tall. I mean, that's a thing though, right? I'm short. So as a short people, I know what it is like to want to have tall people energy. And a lot of us, we do have tall people energy even though we're short. We're like those little dogs that think that we're taller than we actually are. And we like are very loud to overcompensate. You know what I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, something that I think would be kind of fun with these ladies. Uh, I don't have names for them. I've just been calling them like... Strawberry dress girl and black dress girl so far. And that's not very descriptive or flattering. I just, you can't really relate to characters with names like that, you know. So I thought it would be fun if you guys in the comments below told me what you think their names should be. And then if I find one that I like, I'll pin it as the top comment. I think that would be kind of fun. Because um, these ladies will most likely be reoccurring characters on the channel. Uh, cause I really love them. They have really simple designs that are like barely even my design since they're just girls wearing these particular outfits, but you know, I really think they're fun and I think they're the kind of girls that just go out on the town a lot, have a good time, you know? And uh, are they into each other? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I think that's, uh, you know, their business. So anyways, uh, 
you guys can see what I mean by lacking some of my previous anatomical skill. Because I'm really trying to make these have nice poses and it's like, it's working out okay, but uh, I want them to, like what is this? What is, what's she doing here? That's not how a spine works. I've like lost my ability to make curvy characters look curvy and seductive. I gotta get the curves going here, but uh, anyways. Um, have you guys been doing any spooky season art? And another one of my questions would be, do you guys even like spooky season art, spooky season content? I feel like um, whenever October started, because I am of course a spooky kid, TM, I really hit the ground running whenever it came to spooky content and deciding October, every single video is gonna be spooky or Halloween related. <laughs> and I guess because, again, I am such a spooky kid, it never really occurred to me that, like, oh, some people aren't here for the spooky season content? That's crazy. But, like, I am guess it could be true. So, I guess I'm curious. Do you guys like spooky videos? Or is it a very particular kind of spooky video that you like? I'm curious. Comment below and tell me because I would love to know for, especially future reference, because... The ball has been rolling this year already. Like, this is happening. Every video I'm releasing this month has a spooky season theme. But for future reference, for like next year and the years to come, do you guys want a lot of spooky content or maybe just a little bit? Maybe just a couple videos close to Halloween. Um, so that it doesn't interrupt the flow of the normal content quite so much? I don't know. It's just like what I'm in the mood to make during this month, so um, let me know what your thoughts and feelings are on that because I want to make sure that I am making things that I enjoy and that bring me fulfillment and everything because I think a lot of people can tell whenever you're enjoying what you're making versus when you're not um, with like what you guys actually want to see because I know that I've been experimenting with content a little bit lately doing some things that are a little bit different which I think is fun and cool but you guys are also the reason why I can have a YouTube channel and sponsors so I want to make sure that I'm making things that you guys also like gotta strike that balance you know what I mean so uh yeah I am so sorry that this sketch is taking me so long I am just quite rusty right now. I also want these characters to like look a certain way. I feel like this girl is like kind of what I want from this and on brand for the old art style thing, but this pose just still isn't quite doing it for me. I feel like it just still looks kind of flat, if you know what I mean. And I don't want it to look quite so flat. I want it to be a little bit more dynamic. So let's see if we can kind of go over it. It's not helping that this pencil is getting a little bit dull already. I just, I get very nervous whenever I'm using um, ballpoint pen on top of a sketch that I worked very hard on. So uh, let's see here. I gotta make sure I get the angle of everything right. I think this, this arm needs to be up a little higher. And then this arm maybe can be shrunken down, hip out, there it is. Now she's working it a little bit better. There it is, you just gotta like, just make that hip go all the way out, you know what I mean? So the other thing I was kind of thinking about doing with this sketch, which I don't know if this is dangerous since, again, I'm trying to make a cohesive session for once um and also like i feel like i never just sketch i'm always like all right now we're gonna cover it in acrylic paint um i kind of want to cover this in acrylic paint but i don't know if anyone objects to that but i don't know how much i'm gonna make it like a whole painting or not i might just put some of like my paint pens on here 
I might go full on. I don't know. <laughs> I know that a lot of my content is just like, all right, now we're just gonna paint. We're just gonna slap some paint on this thing and paint it, and it's fine. Uh, I I don't know. I just really like having paintings everywhere because it's fun. Like. I don't know who relates to this, but there's something so satisfying about seeing the level of, like, vibrancy and saturation that you have in digital colors on, like, a traditional drawing. That's why I love using acrylic paint so much, because I feel like it's the only medium where I can really get those kinds of results, and it's the only medium where I can kind of work the way I work digitally, because the way I work digitally, I think, is basically my style in a nutshell so um whenever i can't like have my style look the way i've crafted it over the years i'm just like oh this is kind of sad i kind of want to have that but anyways um we need to draw a sink still i think let's see see i think that this pose is pretty good i wish i had done something a little bit closer to like my friend's pose here just because I actually do have a reference for that, but it's too late now. <laughs> so, yes. Let's just do a little faucet, a little fancy faucet. Because this kind of stuff, like faucets and inanimate objects, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me on this, but they're kind of really fun to paint with acrylics because you can like really stylize them and do some wild reflections and everything, so... We're going to do something like this, and then we also need to have, like, palettes of makeup on the counter, I think will be really fun. Let's see here, we need, like, a highlighter. I use so much highlighter for this makeup look in this. Need some mascara. What else? We need, like, a can of hairspray, I think. That really, hair products perfume. That's the vibe. Just the vibe of the ladies going out. Maybe have a hairbrush for my non-curly lady right here. And then and just a little comb. Yeah, yeah, we can color these in. Just the ladies, you know? I think next I'm gonna try to go in and start actually adding some of the definition of the faces with the ballpoint pen. This girl's shoulders are like pretty wacky so I think I'm gonna try to go in first and even up some of this stuff and make it look better because I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like something that I've struggled with for years but I really have a difficult time drawing shoulders for some reason. <laughs> I feel like it's one of the things that people struggle with the least and for some reason it's like the thing that I tend to struggle with the most whenever it comes to drawing people. Like not the most, there's plenty of other things I struggle with more than shoulders, but it happens a lot. I don't know what it is, I just can't get them even for some reason. And uh, I also come up with these wonky poses, I don't know, I kind of blame my art lean. Who else out there has art lean? Comment below. Also, people who don't have art lean, how do you do it and who did you have to make a deal with in order to not have art lean? Like, I don't understand. Is there a, a different way in how people who don't have art lean see things? Like, do they just develop better drawing habits? What is it? What is your secret? Please tell me your secret. It feels like every single thing I draw has just the worst art lean, and I hate it. I just want to draw things that, like, aren't extremely skewed to one side, you know? It's really, really rough, you know what I'm saying? Like, even this is definitely... Oh, she is leaning for sure. And, uh... This pose is questionable. That's the other reason why I like to cover up everything with acrylic paint because I make these poses that are like not quite there 
Like, they're fine, but they could be a lot better. They could use a lot of improvement and, like, little tweaks. So, uh, if I use acrylic paint, then that means that I can fix things after the fact whenever I haven't drawn something that looks very good. It's just one of my tricks along with like the post-it notes. You guys know. We've been through this. The last sketchbook session was only this. So uh, if you guys didn't catch the last ske sketchbook session, um, go ahead and look into that if you're interested in like me suffering for a couple of hours. Um, I, I, I want to get to something else in a second here. Uh, well, a couple of other things. First, real quick, I want to say thank you for all the people who were really nice in the comments on the last sketchbook session, being like, oh, we just like really enjoy these. We're not watching it to watch you suffer. Like, I was joking when I said that fully, um, to clarify. <laughs> But you guys are really sweet, so thank you. I really appreciate all the comments that you guys leave, and it definitely, like, brightens my day and makes me feel like someone is really caring about all this random art content that I'm just sticking out in the void. Um, but I also wanted to mention a detail about the previous sketchbook session. I have no idea what's going on with it, but apparently it has stopped playing after, like, the nine-minute mark, uh, the time code keeps going on, but the audio and video is just not working anymore. And I have absolutely no idea what's wrong or how to fix it. I don't know who to contact about it, because I don't want to take it down or re-upload that, because it just seems weird to do that. It seems kind of like a waste. Like, the algorithm is already not taking kindly to my upload schedule and like what I'm doing on my channel right now It really hates it. It's just like yeah I'm not gonna recommend your videos to your subscribers anymore, and I'm like cool fam. Thanks uh, So I don't want to do something that's gonna make the algorithm even more angry at me because it's already I'm in the doghouse you guys so I don't know who to contact about this or What to do about it? I've never seen this happen to a video before but it happens with me, too, whenever I go and click on the video to try to watch it. Um, it's also freezing up for me. So I don't know what to do. I'm going to just start adding some colors as I'm working on this as well. Just so that it doesn't take me a million years to color this in. Um, and then that way I also am not going to have to do as much, like, quote, inking with a ballpoint pen. I did this uh, whenever I was working on my, like, pumpkin video, too. I just did some, like, paint pen work on that so that whenever I actually went in with the acrylics, it was a little easier. So we're going to see how well this works. This isn't an exact color match for the strawberry dress, but I'm going to be adding some other pink over it. And this will help just to get rid of some of these, like, weird, harsh lines that are going on here. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm very rusty right now, if you guys can't tell. I kind of have to stay in practice to be able to do art good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys relate to that. Oh, uh, gotta shake it up a little bit. Um, oh, wow. Okay, here we go. This is a totally different color. I guess we had just basically straight up pigment coming out there for a second. This is a bit closer of a color match, but still not perfect. Um, but yeah, I don't know who else can relate to that whole thing of like if you don't stay in practice like your art gene just Stops working for you as well um, It's a little frustrating, but Like that's the proof that I feel like um, Even people who quite have a visual library like you've got to keep up with it You can't just do everything without reference all the time because um, Eventually it's gonna kind of run dry you're gonna start drawing stuff that's like weird and that doesn't look quite right. That's what happens to me. I get really lazy and I don't use reference and then I just draw stuff that doesn't look quite right. And I'm trying to stop doing that as much. It's just hard right now though because like creatively I'm split so much between visual arts and other kinds of creativity like costuming and making things and I've been getting into like 3D modeling a little bit because I have to for school and um, I've been kind of thinking about trying to learn how to use Blender and stuff because number one I want to 3D print some stuff for like cosplay since I have access to 3D printers at my school 
Um, and then I also kind of just want to learn how to model characters and stuff because um, here's a fun thing. For an assignment for school, um, since I'm in the engineering program, we use stuff like AutoCAD and SolidWorks a lot. And we had an assignment where we had to design a pair of like custom kind of novelty salt and pepper shakers. And for that, I did the DeLorean and the Clock Tower from Back to the Future. And it was a lot of fun to learn how to model something like that in SolidWorks. And I've been wanting to use Blender for a long time so that I can model more organic things because um, SolidWorks is more of a thing for mechanical design. So uh, I might be getting into that soon too. <laughs> I just have hands in all the pies, creatively speaking, and I can't pick a lane. I just keep spreading myself everywhere, and I feel like it's very confusing for my YouTube audience because they're like, wait, you're doing what now? This is not what we signed up for, and I'm like, well, get on the wagon. Man, this paint pen is like not, hold on, we got cut. Well, I'm not going to push it too much with that paint pen because I feel like it's going to mess up my paper if I do. Um, but yeah, as I was, uh, uh, huh, huh? wow, words are hard sometimes, you guys. Uh, as I was saying, uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff that I want to get into, creatively speaking. So it's hard to stay in practice with like visual arts. And it's hard to kind of like pick a niche and stay in it, if that makes sense. And I know it would probably be more logical to just do a lot of stuff like that on my own time and not stick it on the channel and maybe stick to just art stuff on the channel but this gives me like an excuse to work on stuff like that and uh, it's also just like something that I'm really really interested in so I feel like it's a little harder to just be like oh well you know I do this sometimes you know um, if I put it on the channel you know I can potentially make a little money from doing it which in my mind makes it a bit more justifiable to spend so much time working on things like costuming and uh, 3d modeling or something like that so uh, you know I'll figure it out I just I definitely worry that people aren't gonna be interested in the kind of content I want to make Especially since I've been talking about this so much on the channel recently, but it's just something that's kind of on my mind, like the way the algorithm st sticks you in um, a bubble, which theoretically sounds like it would work. Like, if your subscribers aren't taking an interest in your videos, then are other people really going to be as interested in your videos? But, you know, a lot of it has to do with the topic, you know? I feel like topics are still important and still relevant. I f YouTube acts like it's all about people's personalities sometimes and like the topic of the video is less relevant. I don't know, that's just kind of how I feel, but like it's hard to find an audience for new topics whenever your current audience is there for, you know, one thing. If that makes sense. Anyways, um, yeah, so I guess my whole thing is that I just want to like expand out and do a bunch of different creative stuff instead of just being stuck in one little corner. Because it can be like really boring and kind of counterproductive to your creativity to be so locked into one form of content. Like just having to do one kind of videos all the time. Especially since if it's not the kind of videos that you really signed up to do when you started your channel. Like I feel a little bit that way. Like. I started, I kind of signed up to do one kind of video, and then another kind of video kind of started doing, like, well, so that's what I pivoted into, like, more sketchbook type stuff, but I never really expected to do mostly sketchbook content, so, you know, it's been an adjustment here a little bit, being like, okay, I am sketchbook lady. That is what we do here. I don't know. Because, uh, like, sketchbooks are really fun, but also I feel like they're kind of, to me at least, secondary to most of the art I do. Sketchbooks are like my practice zone. 
They're kind of the place I go to whenever I want to like chill out and just draw something cool that I like that I don't necessarily want to share with the world. But I've ended up sharing a lot more of my sketchbooks with people because it's the content that does well. So it would also be kind of a break from having sketchbooking be so much of my content and I can like kind of just enjoy sketchbooking for the sake of sketchbooking again. Ooh. Eyes are a little rough right now. I'm sorry if I just go quiet. Sometimes I get like into this concentrated mood and I'm like just so focused on what I'm doing on the page that I just stop talking. Let's see here. This is one of the reasons why I kind of want to use some paint on this because like faces are kind of rough right now for me. She looks kind of wild. This is not really what the character is supposed to look like. Like her face is supposed to look like this. Very cute. Very like uh, like, I mean, cute within reason, because she's a vampire, right? She looks kind of, like, real hungry in this one. You can also see that my ballpoint pen technique is just not what it once was. So, I think I'm going to try to do some quick doodles and uh, break out the paint, because I feel like the paint is what's going to be, you know, the salvation for this. I mean, I hope you guys get where I'm coming from whenever I say, like, um, you know, it can be a lot of pressure whenever people just really like to watch you draw in your sketchbook. Whenever that's, like, your happy place. There's a reason why, like, my sketchbook art tends to be some of my best stuff, because it's, like, generally the, my favorite art that I do, and it's the art that's the most untouched by my work stuff. And right now I feel like it's at the point where it is very touched by my work stuff. So I'm like out of practice and it's looking a little rough. And I'm at, I'm, I don't know exactly what to do about that because this is kind of the content that I make that does the best right now. <laughs> and I still need to be making some money. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> but, uh, you know... I've said before in my videos that sketchbook sessions can be a little stressful to make just because, again, sometimes it does take the fun out of it because I can't, like, focus and enjoy the sketchbooking time the way I normally do and the way I prefer to do. Because most of the time I'm sitting back and enjoying, like, a show or a YouTube video and that's how I'm working in my sketchbook. And it's just like a purely creative process, and if a drawing takes a while, it just takes a while. And it doesn't have to be this fast thing that's like, alright, the session needs to be an hour long. If it's more than an hour long, then the algorithm's not gonna like it. And <laughs> like, I guess what I'm saying is that's one reason why I want to find some other content to vary things up. So I don't feel so inclined to constantly just make sketchbook sessions so that they will do well. Um, like, that's not the whole point of YouTube, of course, but, you know, whenever this is sort of what you do for your money and uh, you have, like, sponsors on everything, like, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that's been stressing me to try to put out stuff that's going to do well in terms of views because I'm having more sponsors work with me and they expect views <laughs> to the point where some of them feel inclined to ask for free work if your videos aren't getting the views that they want <laughs> and it's just like stressful you know what I mean so uh we get like all things in life we, we gotta find a balance it's been hard to find a balance lately and um uh, I definitely want to do more like character design things on the channel, but character design can lead to some burnout as well. So, because uh, if you just design characters, it just feels sad. You know what I mean? Like, let me clarify that. Like, if you just design characters all the time, 
and they're not necessarily for purpose you're just kind of designing them it can be like oh but like why am i designing this poor character that's never going to be used again um like if i'm going to design characters i like to design characters that i'm going to draw at least a couple of times like these characters were fun to come up with because i just kind of drew them once in my sketchbook and then i liked drawing them so i kept drawing them that's not the case for every character that I make in a character design video, you know what I mean? So, anyways, I guess the point of all of this jabbering is that right now I'm trying to find the balance between making the things that I want to make that make me feel creatively fulfilled and making the things that the algorithm is going to promote and that people are going to, like, find interesting and relate to and I know that's definitely one reason why people enjoy sketchbook sessions because it's like relatable content it's mostly unedited this is a very raw experience I'm just sitting here in front of my window drawing some vampires you know but uh whenever uh words the other reason why I want to make content that's different is because like I really enjoy the editing process and like making things really wild and overdone. It's just me, but uh, I do very much enjoy that. It's one of the reasons why I started making YouTube videos in the first place. And while sketchbook sessions are very fun and chill and easy to make, by far the easiest video that I put out because the editing is like nothing. I get it done in like an afternoon and then it's just up. And it does take forever to upload because my internet is slower than me getting out of bed on a school morning. It just, it's, it's still not quite doing it for me in terms of my fulfillment needs. I gotta have interesting editing with like dumb stuff going on. Otherwise I'm like, oh, but if it doesn't have dumb editing, is it really even a YouTube video? You guys can go ahead and imagine the Seinfeld theme is going well after I said that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, speaking of Seinfeld, I've been watching so much Seinfeld. It got like back on Netflix. And any spare moment that I have, or any moment that's like I'm working on other stuff, I am also watching Seinfeld. And it has been amazing. Like, nothing hits quite like a Seinfeld rewatch. Nothing. Because it's just, it's so much nothing. Like, that's the point of the show. It's the show about nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> but it really makes you feel better uh, sometimes about doing nothing with your life. Or just sitting and doing nothing while watching a show about nothing. That's one of life's simple pleasures right there. It's great. Um, I, I don't know how else to say it. It's just wonderful to just do nothing once in a while. We're drawing a wine glass on the sink because we are indeed having a girls' night right here. Let me draw these in the reflection as well. I know you guys are going to poke some holes in the logic. Wow, I mm, camera angles. Hold on. Wine glasses. Okay, I know you guys are gonna poke some holes in the logic of this because you use vampires and they're looking at themselves in a mirror and it's like, that's not how that works. It is how that works in my little universe here. Just cause it's a cute idea, okay? Just, you know, and vampire lore can be different sometimes. Pfft, it's fine, it's good. There's nothing to see here. I like this girl's face a lot better than this girl's face, but we're still gonna have to do some adjustment here. Um, so I think we're at the point where I'm gonna get the acrylic paints out and I'm gonna fix the atrocities that I've done here. So let's get into that. So I'm going to mix up my paint, but another step is determining the aesthetic of the bathroom. And I think I wanna go for this sort of like 80s 70s vibe where you got these like ugly pink and teal colors together. I really like that vibe I don't think it's ugly. I think it's cute. So 
so I think this is what we're gonna go for. All right, so next I'm gonna just block in my skin tones here. And if you, I don't think I've ever done a video on my channel where I just painted like this in real time. So today I guess you're gonna be able to see me paint in real time a little bit and see my process for it. Um, whenever I'm painting like characters, I normally do like skin tones first just because that tends to be the most organic part. If that makes sense, like it's the part that has the most like detail and shading for my style. Like clothes don't tend to have as much detail and shading. So if you do it first, then you can paint over like clothing bits that you accidentally paint onto with more like solid colors. And you don't have to try to color match a skin tone. You can more so just kind of go for it. If that makes sense. I don't think that made sense, but anyways, <laughs> this is sort of how I do things. Whenever I'm painting like darker skin tones like this, I tend to like lay down the darkest undertone first and then add like highlights. And then I normally do the reverse whenever I'm painting lighter skin tones, just because I find that that's like the easiest method for me to use. It tends to be sort of the fastest process. So like, I'll normally lay down the kind of base for the skin tone, like I'm doing here, and then I'll move to a different area of the painting while this is drying, and then I'll go back and paint like details and highlights in. So uh, this process can be like a little bit tedious, but Hopefully I can do this like within the time frame of a sketchbook session and not have to do any time lapse. I know that you guys don't mind long videos. It's just like I don't want to be unentertaining for a long period of time. But um, on the subject of acrylic paint, I know that a lot of people have been asking for an acrylic paint tutorial that's maybe like in the vein of uh, the digital art tutorial that I made. A little while back and I am planning on making one I just need to find a good block of time to do it in so I'm thinking that's probably something I'm gonna do during the holiday season that way I can spend a little bit more time resting and maybe focus on like one big project to put out because I want to make this video really good really thorough and informative because um, I feel like working with acrylics is just not super common so not a lot of people really know how to do it at least for character illustrations like this like of course people still work acrylics uh, with acrylics for a bunch of other things but whenever it comes to stuff like this you see gouache being a lot more popular but like I just haven't had a whole lot of luck with gouache and part of it's because I have refused to take the time necessary to sit down and just like watch some videos and try to actually learn how to use gouache. Um, I like immediate gratification in my art, like we kind of all do, but I definitely want to learn how to use it eventually. But for now, acrylic paint, the texture and the workflow, I don't know. I like it. It works for me. So I almost don't feel like I need to learn how to use gouache because like I have a medium that works for these kinds of illustrations. And it doesn't take forever. I don't know, like I guess some people just like the versatility of gouache better. I'm not sure why so many people gravitate towards it. But um, historically it just hasn't been for me. I think part of that is because I keep trying to use it the way I use acrylics because that's what I'm comfortable with and it just doesn't work the same way but I think the biggest thing for me that I don't like about it is like whenever you're trying to layer it, um, it like dries different depending on the opacity that you're using. Like it's very difficult to blend in my experience. Whereas whenever you're trying to blend acrylics, it just comes a little bit easier to me. I don't have a lot of difficulty trying to blend acrylics together. So, uh... That's kind of what's prevented me from trying to use gouache, but anyways, uh, I can show you guys how I use acrylics, and I'm sure if you're watching along, you can kind of see how I'm doing it just right here. Um, if you're going to use gouache or acrylics, I also just 
kind of an unrelated tip. I really recommend uh, getting some finer brushes like the one I'm using here. I got like this pack of brushes on eBay for like nine bucks. I have even more of them. It's like a pretty big pack. Uh, they have a bunch of different sizes and they're just really nice. But uh, they've allowed me to get so much more detail. And I find that whenever you're working with paint, detail is just super important. Because it's kind of the thing that makes it look like that almost digital art style, right? Having all that detail and being able to get like really crisp lines. I feel like I've only really really been able to do that with my thinner brushes. And um, I believe that these are just maybe even watercolor brushes, I don't know. But they're just super easy to use, um, easy to figure out. I really enjoy them, so. I recommend it if you're in the market for some brushes. Go ahead and just like look on eBay or Amazon or something for some brushes and they will help tremendously because sometimes painting with a big old chunky brush is hard. But I guess I could talk a little bit about my process here. Um, as you can see, I've kind of laid down just a base layer. And now I'm thinking I'm going to go in with just a slightly lighter color and start adding a couple of highlights. Normally I'll wait until it's like basically completely dry to go and do this. But I'll add a little bit just so I can kind of plan where I'm going to put things. And then that way I can also clean up mistakes. <laughs> it's another big reason why I like these really opaque mediums because it's like really easy to go and correct a mistake. If you did something that you don't really love, you can go and you can fix it and pretend that it never happened. Acrylic paint and gouache and opaque, opaque, what? <laughs> opaque mediums are also really good for getting a much wider range of skin tones because um, whenever you're using markers or watercolors and everything, I'm sure other people struggle with this. It's really hard to get like a good range of skin tones and it's hard to get um, paint pens and markers and stuff like that that have especially darker skin tone colors that actually look right and ones that are actually gonna look like warm and vibrant and really nice so that's one reason why I also like using uh, acrylic paint because with my witch character here she has a pretty dark skin tone so if I were to use like I don't know, watercolors or something, it would take a while, a while of layering, at least for me and my level of ability, to like build up the watercolors to get that like nice warm skin tone. So that's the other reason why I like using acrylics because you can do it pretty quickly and you can get some nice results, some nice warmth and highlights and depth and dimension. I just really like it. As you can see in like the little paintings that I showed earlier, um, I just really like using paint for getting those kinds of like little vibrant illustrations that almost look digital. It's just really good. So uh, I used to be really into using watercolors. I still really like watercolors, but ever since I discovered that I can get like almost near digital results with acrylic paint. I've been absolutely obsessed with using it. Um, and it makes all of my sketchbook pages super warped because I have a problem. But yeah, let's see here. Whenever I'm painting lighter skin tones, like I was saying, I guess I can say this about um, my lighter skin tone strategy, I kind of go in reverse. I go with um, usually the lightest pigment that I'm going to use or like the lightest color and then I'll go in and add like more fleshy tones just to kind of make the skin look more alive and to add some like shading and dimension and everything. Um, just because like I, I found that to be the easiest method for making everything look right in terms of skin tones. At least for me, you know. Um, as you can see, this process doesn't take too long either. That's the other reason why I like acrylic paint. I feel like this whole video is just turning into me 
lobbying for why acrylic paint is cool, but that is just me as a person, huh? So in slight contrast to how I paint darker skin tones, whenever I'm painting lighter skin tones, since I have like all these sort of fleshy undertones going on, uh, I kind of like to go in while it's still wet and add those so that they blend in a little bit. Um, because whenever I'm doing like a darker skin tone, I normally do the fleshy kind of undertones in like the first pass, if that makes sense. I kind of do it at the same time where I'm doing that first layer because there, that's like the tone of the skin, if that makes sense. And then I'm adding like highlights from there and the highlights have like, you know, they're, they have more shape to them, if that makes sense. Just like whenever I'm painting like more lighter highlights they have on like a, a lighter skin tone they have lighter shapes i don't know if i'm making any sense here um but uh for me it just doesn't require as much blending with my art style so i like to go in and just do this um and it just tends to be a bit of a quicker process if you get it whenever it's still wet Cause then you don't have to like go in and do a bunch of like painting paint back in i don't know i don't have like a very articulate way to explain my process i'm just attempting to make it make sense you know i don't know if i'm actually making it make sense but you get me so like i'm just gonna kind of go in and do this and just sort of try to blend the colors together. And then, this girl is really, really pale, like this character. So I'm gonna, like in the lightest part of the skin, I'm gonna add a little bit more like white, white tones almost. She's a vampire, so. She's like kind of dead, but it's good, it's chill. She's doing her thing. So I'll do that and that. I also love acrylic paint because you can cover up like mistakes. Have I mentioned how you can cover up mistakes and how great that is? It's amazing. I don't have to plaster sticky notes everywhere. I can just like, if I, if I mess up, I can grab some paint and then there it is. It's got paint on it now. Can't see it. So like, we're getting off topic again. Well, kinda, I don't know. What's a topic anyways? If you're wondering why the art completely stops for a couple of seconds whenever I lean this way, it's because I'm getting more paint. Um, but speaking of like tutorials and content like that, what other tutorials are you guys interested in seeing? Or like more educational stuff? Because I'll be honest, there are only so many things that I feel qualified to even talk about on the channel. Cause as we have demonstrated time and time again, I'm not the best artist. Like, I'm good, but like... There's a difference between being pretty good at art and being able to teach others. And, like, there's some things where, like, I can kind of do it, but I don't know if I can explain how to do it. It's like, I just fall into it looking okay, and I have to do a lot of tricks to get it to look that way and I could probably make a tutorial on something like that eventually but like I think especially for a lot of beginners it's better just learn how to do it right instead of use a bunch of like tricks but I'm old and set in my ways and I don't know what I'm doing half of the time so I'm gonna use some tricks sometimes figuring out how I'm gonna paint the sleeves on this black dress is always fun cuz I kind of do it differently every time Painting translucent things can be a little interesting, but it's fine. Um, if you guys want to know what I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing a purple color and just kind of sticking it on there. And it kind of looks translucent once you finish up. And I'm also kind of like leaving out some white bits just because I feel like it adds to the sheerness of it. Um, I guess sheer would be a good word for the properties of this fabric. And I'll kind of paint in the shadows and everything. 
and then try to give the edges a bit of a cleaner look. See like that and it kind of, I don't know if it looks like anything, but to me it kind of looks the, the type. And we do that again over here and you just kind of, you make it work. This is a very technical process where everything is highly, highly thought out and everything is going how it's supposed to. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. My painting process is absolutely completely all over the place. It's one reason why I haven't done the painting tutorial yet because I kind of do things differently depending on like how I think it should look and ah, I don't know. All right, now I'm gonna try to fix the pink dress. I'm gonna have to introduce some other tones to it as well, but we need to make it make sense. Cause right now, oh look at that. That is neon right there. Check that out. This tone needs to be much lighter, but we'll fix it in a second. I kind of like painting light tones on top of darker tones, just because whenever you have edges that show through, it kind of it gives it some like depth. If uh, you know what I mean, kind of makes it pop. Especially something neon like this. This is such a neon pigment that if I add like a lighter tone on top of it and have some of this neon showing through, I think it's going to lend itself to a cool effect. I believe that is how I did it the last time I painted her in this dress. So. Do you guys have just like guilt about not naming your characters and not naming like your plants or your car or just you have these things and you don't name them so you just refer to them with like these very vague terms and you're like, oh man, I should really have a name for this thing, but I don't. Is that a normal thing to be worried about? There's a million other things to be concerned about these days and yet this is what I'm concerned about. This might be too late, but you know, like, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Here we go. Covering up mistakes. Making things look regular. See, now you can kind of like paint highlights almost. Like the, the lightest points of something. And leave some of those darker tones in there. And it just like looks intentional. Also makes it have an interesting texture. I need to stop calling these videos sketchbook sessions whenever I'm just painting. Like, is this, can you call this a sketchbook session? Is that fair? I'm sorry to those of you who are like, just actually genuinely sketching in your sketchbook. And you're like, man, why is sketching in your sketchbook not the standard anymore? It's like kind of funny how we gotta be so extra about everything that now sketching in your sketchbook doesn't feel significant enough to make into a YouTube video. I am not helping with that. <laughs> I love how the strawberry dress feels like such a like beautiful little princess dress. It's so cute. I love it. But I feel so bad for giving my vampire girl such a weird expression, but we're gonna fix it. I think it's already looking better. And I think the more pastel pink also looks a lot better here, so. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of work on the background through this quick montage, and then I will join you again in a moment. Okay, so I've roughed in a good bit of the background, and I've done some color blocking for some of the larger areas, like the hat and everything, just because it's tedious and it takes a while. So now I'm gonna try to go in and first of all, finish the color blocking on this little dress, just because I don't want to do everything off camera. And then I'm gonna add more detail to like the faces and all the stuff on the counters and everything. Just kind of try to finish up this painting. I'm gonna try not to let it get too complicated and out of hand. Um, I say that every time and then guess what? It gets very complicated and out of hand. But uh, I need to still go in and 
you know, define the faces of the ladies here and also, you know, add some detail to the hair and stuff like that. And also detail to some of the items on the counter and the sink. But um, as you can see, I went with a very interesting aesthetic for the bathroom, but I think it's pretty cute. I would have a bathroom that looks like this. I've actually been in a bathroom that looks like this. I can't remember whose bathroom it is, but I'm pretty sure it was my grandma's old bathroom, like at her old, old house. So that is kind of the inspiration for this particular bathroom. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if anyone else does this, but I thought it was worth mentioning because I haven't really seen it in other painting videos that I've watched about watercolors, but if you guys notice, I kind of dip my brush in water a lot between uses with my acrylic and I kind of like get the acrylic paint to be a little bit watery. Maybe this is just a normal regular thing that everyone does, but I actually don't see a lot of people doing it. So I felt it was worth mentioning, but I almost used my acrylic paints the way I use gouache. You know how like gouache, you can kind of make it opaque in water if you want. I basically do the same thing with acrylic paint, but it dries a little bit more evenly for me. And that's one reason why I like using it. So whenever I'm using acrylic paint, I kind of get it a little bit watery, at least on the first couple of coats so that I can have more detail and really move it around easily because sometimes it can get kind of goopy and like it's just not a very pleasant working texture but when you use a little bit of water with it you have a little bit more moisture it, you can move it around easier and you can also get like a little bit of opacity depending on the surface you're working on i find that that technique works a bit better on smoother surfaces you can still use it on stuff like canvas but I just don't prefer it because canvas can get like a little goopy and I don't prefer canvas in general for that reason so yeah so whenever I'm painting something like hair see ooh, that was a thick brush stroke oh boy I want to make sure I get the tip there we go that's a little bit better so whenever I'm painting hair I want it to be kind of runny so I can get these like really thin little hair lines and everything. And I can go to a smaller brush for this, but I do generally like the flexibility of this particular brush that I'm using, even though it is not the smallest brush in this little collection. So I try to do a lot of things with this brush just because I feel like I have a little bit more control. So, um, Trying to get that bend whenever I'm painting hair it is a little bit easier with this brush. But water definitely helps to make the paint a little bit more runny. So when you're doing these like quicker strokes. The other thing that I do, if you notice, is I'm holding my brush at an angle so that it's like kind of flat. And that also helps to get a bit more of like a sharp line with the brush. I like getting details. I don't know if you guys can hear my mom, but she's talking about the sewing basket for some reason. I've been working on so many like projects with sewing, I might have confiscated something that they need unintentionally. Um, well, it's too bad because I'm on air right now. But yeah, as you can see, whenever I'm going in like this, it's a lot easier to get these little fine lines and details. It's another reason why I like using acrylic paint, because like, you can really focus on these like big shapes and color blocks, rather than just lines. I find lines to be a little boring after a while, because like, you're just trying to... I don't know, it's just harder to capture form for me. Partly because I do have such intense art lean. It's easier for me to just draw in like a shape, like an overall shape or a color, you know? That way 
there's less art lean and everything just kind of looks a little bit better. I can make sure that the shape of what I'm doing and like the form of what I'm doing actually really looks good. So, uh, tips and tricks. I think some of it is like finding mediums that cater themselves to the way that you draw. Um, cause some mediums just don't work great for me. Cause like they're focused on other things. So especially lately as I've gotten more into acrylics and more into like a painterly art style or like, I guess a color blocky kind of art style, um, certain mediums, like especially ink, just have not been working as much as well for me. Uh, cause I really like to have these like big blocks of color and I'm not great at ink to begin with. So I put all this effort into making my inks look good and then I just go and cover them up with acrylic paint. So, mm, yes, logic. It helps to just sometimes, wow, my family's being real loud right now. It's funny how they get super loud right when I start recording. It's like a consistent thing. Another consistent thing is that they like to use the blender when I'm recording and the blender is really so I'm like, whoa. It's like these hot spots during the day when I guess it's just a coincidence that I'm recording and they're also using the blender. Uh, you know, it happens. I feel like we're getting to that late portion of the sketchbook session where my voice just gets low and whispery and I start doing the Bob Ross thing. And I also forget what, oh no, I did a whoopsie. Let's see if we can fix that. This is also when the mistakes tend to happen. Am I right, gamers? I've fixed my paint blunder. All right, I don't know exactly what portion of this I'm gonna work on next, but I think I'm gonna go in and begin fixing the skin tone here. I'm not fixing it, but like actually adding shading and definition. Oh my gosh. And my brother is watching things really loud in the next room, so. I might need to attend to that. Okay, back to painting skin tones. I'll normally have like a color that's sort of like my mid-tone highlight type color that falls in between, you know, like my darkest and highest ranges. And for this part, I will try to get my brush kind of watery so that I can sort of like blend edges together and stuff like that. And then I'll add like some highlights with lighter colors to areas that would probably have highlights and sort of like that I guess. You do have to be careful not to overdo it with the water whenever you're using the acrylic paint because it is very easy to overdo it with the water and then you just have a little bit too much paint. Like that was probably a bit too much there, but uh, I'm gonna extend this elbow just a little bit because I feel like her arm looks a little weird. Yeah, that's good. I'm really getting those Bob Ross vibes again. And then just to create a lot of contrast, I'll normally paint like a little intersecting portion like this, just much darker so that you can really get the impression of like, all right, these are separate planes, you know, I kind of went outside my boundaries, so if that happens, you just fix it. That's what's so great about paint. It's like so easy to fix mistakes you can just paint over stuff infinitely. Mistakes are an illusion. There we go. And then I'm probably gonna like go over a lot of this in the end with like a words. Mm. Yes, words. Okay, uh, a ballpoint pen in the end 
just to like give some like lines and definition it's because it's something that I like to do here we go highlights I'm still not great at this method like it's a little tricky it's a lot easier to do digitally for sure because you have like much better methods of like blending colors together and you also have an airbrush never underestimate the value of a good airbrush like i constantly whenever i'm painting traditionally i'm just man i wish i had an airbrush because it makes blending like a hard edge into a soft edge so much easier because a lot of times you're gonna like have these uh areas where you just need the edges to blend into each other and it's a lot harder to do with just a paintbrush and acrylic paint also does not have a very long working time like it doesn't stay wet for long which is to me one of its advantages and one of its disadvantages because I've kind of learned how to work with that and learned how to work fast enough so that I could get the details in that I want to get and blend when and where I need to blend and everything but whenever I was first working with it I was like oh man it's so hard to blend things it's like everything dries before I'm ready for it to dry I was like oh I really just need to try like oil paint right but ultimately I feel like it was just a matter of actually learning how to use it properly because now i can kind of like blend things a little better you know let's see here it's definitely easier to work with skin tones whenever you have like a bigger drawing some of these bits have to be so detailed that it's difficult to capture a little bit quicker. So I'm trying not to take forever here. <laughs> I'm really not. Sometimes whenever you're painting stuff like this, it just takes a while. Cause like, it's a lot of detail to capture in like an hour long session, which is why I did do a little bit of the, you know, time lapsed, well, jump cut, however I'm gonna edit it. I did some of that footage whenever I was painting the background because I just don't want like a bunch of dead air if I'm not having to talk I can normally paint a little faster but I'm just not quite getting what I need out of this tone mixing paint is another like difficult part of acrylics because you gotta like figure out how the color theory works. Whereas when you're doing digital, you have a color wheel. It just feels a little easier for the most part. Um, but if you're new to acrylics and you wanna use them, uh, I recommend acrylics, especially for beginners because you can get some of them so quick, uh, cheaply. Like um, for those of you who don't know, at least in my area, they have these apple barrel little bottles of acrylic paint at my local Walmart and they're about 50 cents a bottle, I believe, um, which is very, very cheap. <laughs> like that's, you know, super affordable. You can get a bunch of different colors and you can get pretty specific colors. Like I have a color that's specifically like kind of a skin tone base that I bought that I use for um, specific characters of mine that have that skin tone. And then I have some darker skin tone bases that I use and it's like with this, technique where I lay down a flat color and then I paint skin tones on top of that. It's like the base that I use and it makes the process faster because then I don't have to mix a fresh skin tone and make sure that I'm like staying within that skin tone. Uh, I find it to be really handy and you know it, it can get expensive whenever you're having to buy bottles of paint for every imaginable color. Uh, in some brands, but I find that if you do it with like really cheap brands, if you need a color and just like have it on hand, it makes it a lot easier. Like, I'm pretty sure I have skin tone base colors for like Orchid, Randler, and Paul, my OCs, 
or at least I have ones that I can use for them. And it just makes everything way, way faster whenever I want to paint them because I can just whip out like my base color and it's there. And I don't have to mix everything. I don't have to worry about like, oh, is this, uh, you know, is this the right color? And is it gonna dry weird? No, because it's like the same color and I have it right there. So this is the part where we're trying to add details to the face. Definitely the most dangerous part of the sketchbook session. Everybody just hang on to your seat, folks. You're in for a whirlwind here. A lot of this part is just rendering, it's just getting colors in there. It's basically just like a simplified version of what I do digitally, just because I'm not going to get the same level of detail as I would if I was digital, at least not at this scale, because you can't like zoom in for eternity like you can in digital. So. The nose is always a difficult part. Who else struggles with noses? Like, I feel like I've found a very solid method for drawing noses now, but for the longest time, that was like my main thing. That was like, okay, noses are the bane of my existence. Can't draw noses right. I don't know if that's like a thing for many people, but it was a thing for me, especially since like at the time, the art style that was all the rage was like, the anime art style where you like don't have a nose and I feel like that's fallen out of popularity now but at the time it's like all of the artists I looked up to their art style didn't have a nose so whenever I was like oh I want to find good art reference for how to simplify and draw a nose you didn't have people who were drawing noses that you could like look at and see oh this is how you do it and like if you wanted to go to other places, most of the time it was like hyper-realism or you had people who were doing more Disney art styles. And I was like, how do I figure out how to draw a nose for the art style that I want? Like I found a couple animes that were good reference, but it was just hard. And then I finally figured out this little method and it works pretty good now. But man, noses can be a struggle, folks. Let's see here. I feel like this is coming along pretty good. But I definitely have a lot of finishing work to do. I'm wondering how much time we have left for me to do the finishing work. So we might go and do a little bit more of off camera work. Or like, you know, at least jump cut work here in a second so that I can focus on some of the details and finishing touches on camera and you guys don't see so much of this like you know preliminary stuff i know i've come to realize that you guys don't care so much about what's on screen but you know i care i don't want there to be lulls and i don't want it to go on for a million years because trust me i will just make the longest darn videos. And I know a lot of you say you don't mind, but you don't mind these because I have time to kind of get in there and do a little, you know, a little movie magic and do a little editing and make it like all polished and give it some vibes. But like, what if I just released something that was so raw, so unedited, that it just didn't give those same vibes. It just hit different. Like that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to release something that hits different in a bad way. Let's see. Now I feel like this girl's arm is real long. But I don't know if I can do anything about that at this stage. I mean it can, but like, do I have the energy emotionally? That looks a little better. 
these shoulders, man, I'm still struggling with all the shoulders. It's hard with these like bell sleeves to like get a shoulder that makes sense. There, I said it, shoulders don't make sense. You gonna fight me on that? I don't think anyone's gonna fight me on that. All right, I'm gonna block in some hair real quick. Let's draw some blood. I mean, wine. Making progress bit by bit. We need to add some ribbons here now. This is the point at which we give her a neck. Like, part of the issue with this pose is like, her neck is just not in the right position at all. And I'm very sorry. My wonky art strikes again. I don't know, like I know it's wrong, I just can't quite put my finger on how it's wrong and how I would go about fixing it but it's kind of too late now. I mean, I guess I could do a couple of things to fix it. I don't know. We, uh, eh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now the final steps of this illustration are really just to go in and clean all the paintwork up. And then for this particular one, I'm going to go in with a ballpoint pen and add some lines with that just because I kind of like the aesthetic of how that looks and uh, I don't really have time to refine it with paint because that takes a while. So I'm still adding highlights to her face, trying to get the skin just right. Sometimes this is a bit of a process for me because I still haven't quite figured out this technique. I'm still like you know, altering it and changing it to figure out, you know, the best way to do it. I mainly just want to get some really nice highlights in here and just make sure that the skin tone looks nice and bright and vibrant and put shadows where they're supposed to be, you know, all that good stuff. So for art styles like this, lighting for me is like more of a suggestion than a role, like light direction, whatever. I tend to pay more attention to stuff like that in digital art just because it's easier to, and whenever it comes to traditional art, I can get a little bit lazy because we have like light sources here and you can just imagine that there's one coming from the vanity, maybe, I don't know. But this is the way I'm gonna do it, just so that I can kind of make the faces look nice and look how I want them to look. It doesn't have to be completely accurate, you know. I just want it to look nice. So this part can be a little tricky. Like I'm still really learning how to paint skin in general. This has been a several year kind of thing for me. And oh, look at that, I already made a mistake. Um, but especially like once you throw lighting into the mix, it's not just straight up bored light. <laughs> I begin struggling because that's sort of how I initially learned how to paint skin. And then, you know, whenever you actually start painting at subjects instead of just like doing practice, you have different lighting situations, which I have less experience doing. So. I'm trying to get some practice painting figures in more dramatic lighting and varied lighting, but I, of course, since I'm out of practice, haven't been doing that as much lately. <laughs> so, um, this is more so just a fun painting. I'm not too concerned with things looking really accurate or perfect, because like, this is of course very stylized too. So, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just, I just want to look cute, you know? Um, in other news, I was talking about like my project uh, for like Halloween, my costume project earlier. And this is now a different day from the day that I began painting this painting for the sketchbook session because I ran out of time yesterday. And 
Last night, I started working with the LEDs for my costume project. And yeah, it's got LEDs in it because, you know, I have to be extra. And this is the first time I've ever wired anything. And it's like proven to be a little difficult just because like, so I wired my first LED just to a three volt battery and battery holder and a switch. And that was really easy, super fast, no problems at all whatsoever. So I was like, all right, now that we have some unearned confidence, let's do the other LEDs that I need for my project and wire three LEDs in series to a three volt battery and a switch. And for some reason, I cannot get them to light up. There's a problem somewhere. And I've been doing research and trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong and I have not been able to figure it out. I've rewired it like a couple of times and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'm following for reference. So my memory card ran out of storage. So I have absolutely no idea how much you guys heard of what I was just saying, but um, to summarize, I'm struggling to wire these LEDs and I'm crunched for time. So I think I'm going to bug some people I know who have expertise on such things and see if they can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Cause I'm definitely doing something wrong. I'm going to be so irritated if like, <laughs> I just don't have the polarity right or something like that. Cause I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. I have positives connecting to negatives. Um, so I would think that's right, but maybe uh, people who do electronics can tell me uh, their secrets and how they get things to work. But that's one of the things that I've been up to for this costume thing that is new that I haven't really done before. It's been really fun for the most part, but it's also been like a little stressful just because like Working with electronics, I don't want to blow anything up, right? So I've been trying to follow some precautions to prevent myself from doing that. Because I'm kind of a tornado of a person sometimes, so just get really excited. But that's one of the things that I'm working on. I'm very excited to show you guys what I've been making. I just hope it like gets done on time and that it comes out well. Because I've done some things during the process of making this that have been a bit chaotic and a bit like unplanned. I basically just keep adding more and more stuff because I'm maximalist and I don't know how to stop myself. So I hope I will know when enough is enough and it won't be too much because that would be bad if I did all this and then it just didn't turn out good. But Anyways, uh, so aside from that, uh, I've talked about Seinfeld, I've talked about other things that I'm working on and doing. Um, I guess I kind of want to talk about a couple of the other kind of content things I want to do for the channel, uh, just because I want to run some ideas by you guys. I know I've probably mentioned some of this in the earlier part of the session, and if I have, please forgive me, that was yesterday, and I barely remember yesterday, because it was just so busy, so, uh, if, you know, I repeat myself, it, just please be understanding, because I'm very tired. But yeah, uh, so one of the things that I want to try to do more in the future is do some like sculptures and stuff like that because I used to be big into sculpting and making sculptures. I actually used to make a lot of art dolls and uh, like mostly like animal art dolls. I'll maybe try to put a couple pictures of some ones that I've made on screen if I remember to do that but um, they're kind of like stuffed articulated dolls that have clay in certain places and they can be really really like intense in terms of the construction of them and they're just like really fun and super cool to make so I've kind of been thinking about getting back into making some of those like especially original designs because I just thought they were super fun and then I also want to just try some sculpting in general 
because I also used to do a lot of that and I miss it. It's really fun. Um, it can just get a little expensive with the clay, but since I use Sculpey mostly and polymer clays, it's not too bad, but um, that is the main reason why I started not doing as much of it whenever I was like younger and in high school. Number one, it was just like very time consuming and I didn't really have as much time. And number two, it was kind of expensive to just keep dropping all that money on like materials every few weeks. So, but now I think I can do a little bit more of that. But I think it would be fun to put on the channel and just have some variation in content because I feel like you have certain areas of YouTube where you find a lot of that kind of thing, but I don't encounter many videos where people are just sculpting for the sake of sculpting or doing, I don't know, kind of cool dioramas and stuff. I have been watching a little bit of that because like Nerd Forge makes dioramas and cool stuff, but I want to try my hand at sculpting again and maybe make some cool stuff. Um, for like an example of sort of the direction that I want to go in with the content, um, I feel like Jazza has been doing a lot of the kind of stuff that I want to do lately. Just like his content has such a range because he's been on the internet for so long that you can only do so many drawing tutorials, right? Yeah, at a certain point you've got to like try doing some other stuff just to switch it up a little bit. Um, I feel very much the same way already and I've only been doing this for like, uh, I don't know, probably a little over a year. Probably more than a little over a year, but y you know what I mean. Like, you gotta switch it up. You gotta start finding some other content. Because eventually you just get creatively, like, bored. You just, you're like, oh, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. And some people can do that and not get super bored and keep putting out good ideas. But I find that my ideas just kind of get the same and they blend in and things get all derivative and I don't know. It's just not as fun for me. So I feel like the way I can stay creatively charged is to just do a bunch of different stuff. I feel like that's a lot of fun. So I guess expect some content like that. I'm kind of thinking about doing a sculpting video or something along those lines in November. So if that is something you want to see, let me know. That way I can feel better about doing it and, you know, not putting like so much effort into a video and then people are like, well, that's not really what we're interested in seeing. Because again, I'm trying to find that balance between what I want to make and what you guys want to see. Because it's for me, but it's also for you, you know? So, uh, you know, comment below. Let me know what you're interested in to stimulate the algorithm and so that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, I know that some of the videos that I put out recently that people have really related to is like the character design type stuff, which is fun and cool, but, um, I don't know. It's like, I like doing one-off character design, but I feel like the stuff that people really tend to connect with is like character design for comics and stories. And I'm not a writer and I have like Nightfall. I've been doing those videos a little bit, but, uh... I don't know, like, you know, I had some things in the last video that I made that just, I, I didn't think out well enough, and I, I was just so rushed putting that out because of my deadlines that I didn't get to put enough thought into it, I didn't handle it, you know, with the necessary amount of care, like when you're writing, you know, complex characters and nuanced things, you have to, like, put effort into it because you're representing like real people that exist who experience those struggles and like as you know awesome as it is to have that kind of like representation or you know write characters that have interesting stories like I just don't feel qualified to do that most of the time and um like in the future it's like I don't know how much of that I'm going to do just because I don't <laughs> feel qualified to do it at the moment and I don't have the time to put the necessary amount of research in like you have to kind of research it and understand what you're talking about and what you're trying to relate to your audience in those stories and it's like 
you know, I, I just, I'm not there yet in terms of writing and crafting characters. And, you know, I just don't want to put out anything that is going to be, like, ignorant and not thoughtful and you know so like those kinds of videos it's like really fun to hear about characters and thoughts and ideas that I have but it's also like I don't know how much time I'm going to have to properly flush those things out especially since like currently I'm not really writing an ongoing story um like I don't know if people out there are familiar with the Annie May project that C.T. Chrysler has it's like a story but it's not for the most part, they have it just so that they have characters to draw whenever they want to draw. At least that's my understanding of it. And, uh, like, that's sort of how I handle my stories at the moment. So things aren't completely thought out and flushed out. And I'm constantly changing things, too, because, like, I'm thinking about the story. I'm like, okay, this is going to work better, and this is going to work better. So it's a very, like, fluid thing. <laughs> like, nothing is set in stone. Because the characters kind of just exist in an ever-changing space. Because there isn't a story behind it. Like, there's a very rough one. But there also isn't. So, like, these characters just kind of exist in a world. And they could change at almost any second. So, um, it's like making videos about, this is the kind of person this character is. And this is what they do. And it's like... I don't even know how accurate that is in the long run because they are kind of changing as I learn more about what I want the character to be and what I would want them to do and as I'm learning how to like write a little bit better too. Like my characters have changed a lot over the years as you guys can see and you know with my level of experience like that's not exactly what I set out to do on the channel. Um, like make stories or make characters just because Again, it's not my area of expertise. I don't feel qualified to do it and like tell people this is how you do this because like I got no idea. I don't know what I'm doing. So um, that's that's a struggle because I feel like that's the kind of stuff that people really like to see and that really intrigues people. And it intrigues me too, but I just don't know if at this point in time that's the content that I will be able to put out, especially on a regular basis. The video where I redesigned Knight and Aaron and Cory, I feel like was pretty good and pretty solid because those are the main characters of that story. And I've had them for like, I don't know, six years or something like that. I've had a lot more time to think about them and who they are as characters and their backstory than any of the other characters. But at the same time, they've also dramatically changed over the years and who they are and like what they're doing. And, uh, for the most part, like, they've also changed a good bit since I even made that video as I've been thinking more about them and, like, you know, how I want them to function in that world. So, again, I, as much as people really relate to those videos and like to see them, I don't know how much of them I'm going to be able to make. Um, especially since, like, I just don't feel very confident in my ability to craft thoughtful characters at the moment, you know? I want to learn more before I start doing stuff like that. And I've just overall have way, way too many interests to be able to like spend time consistently every day doing stuff like that. So it's going to be a process. Maybe in the future I'll be able to do more stuff like that. But uh, I'm also indecisive about the kind of stories I would want to tell. Like, I've said it before, but what I would really need is, like, a solid writing partner who, like, knows their stuff. And I just do character design and world building. Because I love world building. I think that I'm decent enough at that. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how to do the more infrastructure type stuff whenever it comes to world building. Because that can be very, very complicated if you want to make it, like, realistic. But obviously, not everything has to be realistic. Um, I just kind of like that approach to world building, like, soft world building is not necessarily my thing. It is sometimes, like, I enjoy watching it, but in the stories I've made, in the worlds I've created, soft world building is not the direction. So, um, like, I really like making maps and, like, figuring out, you know, 
what's the economic structure of this place? What kind of uh, political system do they have? What kind of leadership? What's the history? Like, you know, the real nerdy stuff. The backstory of the location. I like to build a location like it's a character. Because again, I'm a character person. But only in terms of design and who they are and sometimes backstory. I don't know. It changes. But um, that's sort of why I'm like... Man, I kind of don't know what I want to do with the channel next. Because I feel like what I'm qualified to do and what I, people want me to do are like two entirely different things. And, uh, you know, it, it, I'm like, I don't know what direction to go in now. And I also like the stuff that I really enjoy making, I feel like is not always what people enjoy watching. Um... So, I don't know. I'm trying to figure things out here, and I know I will eventually. And for the most part, I'm just going to try to continue to make videos that I think are interesting and that I think, you know, some people might like to see. But it would be kind of helpful if people could, like, directly tell me, hey, this is the kind of stuff we want to see. Um, so, uh, if... And, and maybe not so much random, because whenever I normally say that, I get a lot of comments of like really random video topics where it's like this could definitely be you and it's normally tutorials and stuff like do a tutorials on how to draw the left eyebrow and three quarter view like really specific stuff and i'm like well i don't know if that's a video right i don't know if i can make a whole video on something that nation specific because like i like as much as i hate how the algorithm works and how the platform works in general like it still has to like you know appeal to a broad number of people so if uh you guys could do this instead um and you can even give me suggestions for things to draw in sketchbook sessions because i think i'm getting a little bit more comfortable with sketchbook sessions just because i can be a bit more candid and i can just talk without having to like edit in explosion sounds and fire every five seconds to keep people engaged. Um, uh, I still sometimes like don't know what I'm gonna draw whenever I sit down for a sketchbook session and I feel like it would be valuable to have some feedback on what people wanna see. And I definitely wanna do some more like challenges and like more interactive things during sessions instead of just uh, talking because I feel like that's fun to watch. Um, and then people can see my process a little bit more because I feel like that's one of the things people enjoy the most about sketchbook sessions Being able to actually see like how someone does what they do That's definitely one of the things that's helped me to improve my art the most is being able to actually see artists that I like doing You know techniques that I want to emulate Because it can be difficult to just look at something and be like all right. How do they actually do that? I don't get how they did that um but seeing the process, it breaks it down, and it's like, oh, okay, I get it. It's not actually as hard as I think it is. It demystifies it, if you will. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, just leave suggestions. I, I need to get to the point of what I'm saying here. I keep getting these tangents. What would be the most helpful for you guys is to leave suggestions that you think, you know, you would want to watch, and maybe like a friend, like go off of the people you know and be like, would this be interesting f to this person? Just so you can get that whole broad appeal thing. And then, if you want to leave comments or whatever, do that. Or if you can't think of anything, upvote your favorite suggestions so that I can see them and so that I know, all right, this is something a lot of people want to see. Because if I get like some specific suggestions that people upvote and they're like really excited about, like, I'll straight up put it on my video schedule and I'll make it. Um, I just, <laughs> I need to know that people are gonna wanna see it, right? So, um, definitely upvote things. Even if you leave a comment, upvote other ideas that you like, you know. I got a lot of content time to fill, so, you know, things can always get made eventually. Not everything has to happen in the next month, right? So uh, I'm just trying to 
narrow my scope and figure out what I'm actually doing here. Because I'm getting more and more into like other things besides just like the typical visual arts. Because um, I think the combining things is really cool. And, you know, I think you can open up even more creativity whenever you start combining different mediums and techniques and things. Like, I'm interested in so much about every creative process. Like, I love the crafting side. I love the visual design side. I like the really technical side, like editing and shooting and filming. I like the acting side and the writing and <laughs> just coming up with ideas. So much of everything that YouTube can be, I really enjoy. So I kind of want to like have a crack at all of it. I don't want to limit myself, right? Because I feel like, you know, when you limit yourself, you can put a halt on the creativity. You can also be more creative if you limit yourself. It kind of depends, but you guys get what I mean, I think. I think you, you understand. So, I feel like that was a big, huge tangent. And it wasn't even that different from some of the stuff that I've talked about earlier in the video. But I wanted to be a little bit more specific about actual suggestions. Because I need to know what you guys want to see. Because so far, my upload schedule and my th it's not even really a schedule because like I'll decide to do a video and then I'll be like well never mind I don't have time to do that video on this particular week now because like um I this this is not my full-time job I'm a student um and I'm full-time I'm trying to finish up my degree so and once I finish up my degree I will probably have another full-time job besides like YouTube stuff so, for the foreseeable future, this is not really going to be my full-time job. Part-time job, certainly. But anyways, like, so I've got to have ideas and things that I can realistically accomplish. And if I want to have things that have, like, decently high production value and creativity and have time to get a good edit on it, I just can't realistically upload every single week. Like, recently what I've been trying to do is make multiple videos in a week or two-week period and then release videos like three weeks in a row back to back and then take off one or two weeks to make more videos and that's been working for me a little bit better the algorithm hasn't been quite as angry with me but i think it's also catching on to what i'm doing because random videos it just will not like and i'll be like nope this one that one's a stinker i mean i know that it's like you guys aren't connecting as much with the content and that's fine um Part of that is just, again, I'm trying to figure out what would be fun for me and fun for you guys. So, you know what I mean. You get it. You get it. Um, in terms of the illustration, I feel like we're getting pretty close to the end. Or at least pretty close to the part of the illustration where I tend to... Um, go and finish it up with like ballpoint pen and just little finishing touches so i think i'm gonna do that in a couple minutes and go off camera but for now i hope that everything has been easy to like understand and know what i'm doing and maybe this demystifies acrylic paint a little bit for you because it's really not tremendously difficult to use or to understand just takes a little practice to figure out like how to get it and I feel like also like if you have chunky brushes controlling things with acrylic paint can be its own kind of beast it takes a while to figure out how the paint moves and how quickly it dries and know like what your working time is so if you're interested in using acrylic paint get yourself some cheap little paints from Walmart and then you know, just have at it, experiment a little bit because it's really easy medium to like get into since it can be so affordable and I don't think it's that difficult to use once you figure out what you're doing but I will say you need a pretty good grasp of color <laughs> to be able to use it well because so much of it is basically just laying down flat color that's not super blended in very specific areas. So, um, start with, like, more limited color palettes it would be, like, my first piece of advice. 
and then from there uh, maybe start with more minimal shading and highlights and stuff like that operate more so in like color blocks and stuff um, you know add the line art on top of your finished paintings if you need to to clean things up I've been doing that for a while now um, and do smaller paintings at first like maybe little studies that's what I started out doing for the most part I think I started adding acrylic paint to my sketchbooks as color blocks in the background first and then I moved on to doing little simple studies with acrylic paint and then from there I was like oh you can actually use this to paint what I didn't think that this worked well because whenever I was a kid I was bad at using it um, so from there I kind of just went absolutely wild but I did a lot of studies so that I would have good color references and everything so use reference too don't be like me don't do things without reference because it makes things harder um, and especially if you're feeling rusty brush up like people are, are ask me all the time like how do you study art how do you like um, get over art block and stuff like that um, I'm messing up this face Am I the person who's in a position to give advice? Uh, I, my best advice is to, first of all, like, go back to the source of what inspires you to draw in the first place. Maybe it's music, maybe it's a TV show, maybe it's nature, I don't know. Go and don't do any art for a while. Just immerse yourself in that thing. And then, oh my gosh, this recording is 25 minutes long. Maybe this is just gonna be a really long sketchbook session. I don't know. Anyways, go immerse yourself in that thing and like rejuvenate your little inspiration juices. Um, and then once you kind of like if you get the whim to um, go and create after you've been doing that, normally whenever I'm doing it, I'll expose myself to the thing for a while and I, I'll prevent myself from creating. And then I'll get so fed up and be like, oh, I keep getting inspired I have to create and then I'll let myself go and make something and normally I'll get on these crazy inspiration whims that last months <laughs> and that's how it works for me you gotta like deprive yourself of creativity for a little bit so that whenever you allow yourself to be creative again it like makes you super inspired and this technique works super great if you're in school because a lot of times this will happen organically because <laughs> you'll be so busy you can't create but you'll still be exposed to the same things that inspire you because in your free time you'll be able to like um, you know watch some TV play video games listen to music whatever and then in your free time you'll be like oh man okay finally I have some time to create and you'll want to like actually make stuff again I find that if I'm super busy I'll really savor the time that I have to create and I'll want to constantly like be working on stories and paintings and projects because I'll have all this inspiration because I have so little time to actually sit down and be like okay dedicated creation time um, so whenever I actually have time I'm like in ultra creative mode so I don't know if this works for everyone the same way it works for me, but it's kind of been my little secret method for a while now. And it kind of all just boils down to, hey, like, don't force it, you know? You're not going to be creative 24-7. And I know some people go through periods of really long art block, and that can be really tough. And other factors are involved. Sometimes you just get depressed for a while. It's hard to create sometimes, but um, I recommend, you know, if you kind of deprive yourself for a while, you'll be, you know, really thankful for the time that you do get to create. And sometimes it works to where you'll have these bursts of inspiration. Um, and I also recommend whenever you do get bursts of inspiration to create, even if you don't have much time, do something. Start something. Because then the next time you have another little opportunity to create, you'll already have a little ongoing painting project whatever it is that you're making that you can go and work on whenever you get those little uh, periods of time. So like just starting something can be one of the hardest steps whenever you're dealing with art block. Um, and if you start something whenever you do have a little burst of energy, of creativity, 
it's gonna be easier to go and work on it whenever that happens again. So that's my best advice. That's one reason why I'm um, I'm really into doing project based content because then it's like, you know, every evening I'll go down in my den, I'll stick on Seinfeld and I'll work on my project, whatever needs to get done. Uh, or I'll work on paintings, I'll work on illustrations. Um, that's the other reason why I find keeping a sketchbook to be such a rewarding thing because it's kind of one of those ongoing projects that when you have little opportunities, you can go and work on, right? Because the ongoing project is to finish the sketchbook. And in my case, that means I'll make a video and I'll have a sketchbook tour. Um, but like, it's something that you can work on little bit by little every day, pretty consistently. And it doesn't even have to be big. You can do like a little drawing. So maybe you have a big painting that you want to work on. Start it and just work on it little by little every day. I have one of those paintings sitting in my room right now. It's currently the bane of my existence because it's a birthday gift for a friend and I haven't been able to work on it in forever because I've been so busy with like work stuff. I uh, exceeded the maximum recording time. I don't know where I was. Um, I was about to say this sketchbook session is disorganized as usual and I'm just going to own it. It's part of my brand now. Um, copyright me. No one else can be disorganized because it's part of my brand. Anyways, I was talking about how one of the reasons I like having a YouTube channel is because it forces me to be consistent with making things in my creativity because otherwise it's like I have YouTube in itself is like an ongoing project that whenever I get free time I can work on or you know I have um technically I have to work on it like consistently because now I have contracts and sponsors or whatever but in the beginning it was a little bit more of like it's something that I can work on whenever I have the time to work on it um and since it forces you to be consistent, you're kind of always thinking about ideas and things that you could do. And it's like kind of this continuous, uh, you know, process of trying to be inspired and trying to find things that you can create and things that you would want to create. So um, that's another piece of advice I would have for people who get art block a lot or if you just find yourself having a difficult time staying motivated, just like start a YouTube channel or have some kind of community that keeps you accountable for creating consistently. Because when life is so busy and you're tired and you could just easily sit down and watch Seinfeld, <laughs> sometimes you just want to do that or play video games. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You should take time off to just relax. It's advice that I need to follow. But if you wanna get more into creating consistently and um, just doing what you love and improving at it, and it takes consistent effort. So instead of just sitting down and watching Seinfeld, which is what I would be doing anyways, I could sit down and watch Seinfeld and I could work on a project. And then at the end of a month, I would have watched Seinfeld for starters, which is always great. And I'll also have a finished project. So I'm also doing the fun thing that I like to do, but I'm also like creating at the same time. So if you don't do that, I highly recommend it. Like enjoy your time creating while you're doing it. Um, if you can do other fun things while you create, I highly recommend it. Um, in that vein, whenever I'm creating, one of the things that I do that I enjoy is I eat snacks. Uh, I highly recommend it. Sometimes I'll get a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Right now I have a cup of iced coffee, which is very lovely. Um, other times when I'm feeling a little crazy, a little fancy, I'll eat some bell peppers. I'll eat some flaming Hot Cheetos. And I'll have my like little enjoyable habits combined with my creative habits. And it kind of tricks your brain into thinking all of it is enjoyable, even though creative things can be a little bit stressful sometimes, especially if you're encountering like an art block. I don't know if this is making sense to people, but it's what's worked for me. I also highly recommend this strategy if you have trouble staying motivated for exercising and working out because it is the main thing that has helped me to stay motivated for like working out regularly 
I've been working out regularly for over a year now, which is like such a huge accomplishment because I haven't done that since high school. And whenever I worked out regularly in high school, I, it didn't even last a year, that period of time. I kind of got to my fitness goal and then I was like, okay, I don't have to do it anymore. And it's like, no, 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 that's not how that works, baby girl. You gotta keep doing it, especially if you're like me and you have a very average 23 year old body. <laughs> if you wanna stay healthy, you gotta work consistently at it. It's just how it works. Anyways, so I, for the most part, do not like working out indoors. At least I don't like starting a workout indoors. So I kind of combine my working out time with my outdoor time. Because I'm a nature kid. I love hanging out outside. It's like my absolute favorite thing. Like that's where I find all of my peace and tranquility is in the great outdoors. So instead of just doing a body weight workout inside, I will normally begin a workout with a walk outside, just walking around my neighborhood, enjoying the nature, chilling out, relaxing. And then I'll go on a run and then I'll do something like indoors that's more muscle focused and like body weight or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, but I won't just do that because it's like, honestly, it can be so boring and it gets old, you know, I just get sick of it. Um, so that's another little strategy that I recommend. And then I also combine that with like having time for like mental health and like journaling and everything, I'll combine that habit with, you know, chilling outside, enjoying nature and like doing that. So now exercise is combined with relaxation and self care, which is what it should be in the end. It's just difficult to get started sometimes. So if you kind of start small with a little walk and then work your way up to, okay, we're doing a run. Now we're doing some more intense exercise. It's just way easier to do. I highly recommend it. And it's made me really enjoy running and working out in a way that I never had before. Because whenever I was younger, I absolutely hated it. It was death. I could never get enjoyment out of it or endorphins. Like, I could to a certain extent. But generally, it was just not it. So, um, if you like me and you struggle with that... Uh, here's a little life hack for you. If you need a little life hack, I've got you life hacks. But, uh, yeah. I don't know, like, it, it took a pandemic for me to start taking care of my body. But, I'm glad it, I am now. It's just kind of sad that it took that. But at least I am doing it. Okay, so I feel like we're at a bit of a stopping point here and this video is probably gonna be going on for literally ages, just your entire life. So I'm gonna finish a lot of this off in time-lapse. It's probably gonna be very basic things that I've been doing, so it's just more of the same. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I will show you the finished result in a couple of seconds. And here is the finished painting. I'm definitely pretty pleased with how it came out. There are some spots where, you know, I'm feeling my rustiness and my need to practice. A lot of the line work and just details tend to be on the chunkier side, which for my art style is just not really what I'm looking for from my artwork. So that was like a little bit eh, but for the most part, I really like how all the details came out. Uh, the skin was a struggle. I'm definitely rusty at painting skin since it's been a while since I've painted in my sketchbooks. It's been since my sketchbook that I basically just painted in. So, you know, I need to get back into it and I need to practice, but I think this girl's face ended up looking very cute. A little defious, a little playful, you know. Head on the town to uh, go out and eat and 
be non-threatening. I hope you guys enjoyed me painting in my sketchbook. In the future, I think I'm going to try to actually sketch in my sketchbook for the next few sessions because I know I've been doing a lot of stuff with paint and I feel like I should just make a normal video if I'm gonna paint and not actually sketch. So uh, next time I do something like this, it'll just be a normal painting video, but I can try to do some normal painting videos that have real-time footage like sketchbook sessions do. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the people who watch like hours and hours of these sketchbook sessions into the end. It helps them to do better it helps the powers that be know that people actually enjoy this stuff so from the bottom of my heart thank you and if you feel so inclined to help out in other ways if you're not subscribed you can do that below you you know where it is and then like and comment and all that good stuff if you subscribe, turn on notifications because YouTube doesn't like to tell people when I upload. Anyways, I hope you're having an amazing spooky season. It's almost Halloween week, so do some spooky things today. Just walk outside in the middle of the night and be that person. I do it all the time. It's great. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next week. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. I have to go and do gratuitous amounts of research about how wiring and circuits work. And that's not a joke. That's what I gotta go do, because I'm struggling. Bye!